You gonna sing it for me? You want me to sing it for you? I mean, just a little, just like. Hearts of fire, hearts <laughs> of fire. Come on, dog. You see me? It, it's just interesting. It's golf is just so different. I would never say anything to you in the league because you put my ass. You know what I mean? But if I had a in teammate theory. that was twice the size of you, maybe I'd get up in your grill. <laughs> you know? But you got your caddy though. <laughs> Have you seen him? He's shorter than I am. Yeah. Hey, yo, so check this out. Uh, welcome back to Range Talk. I'm your host, Roger Steele. Uh, today, we finesse Callaway into setting us up with Xander Schauff. No big deal, just one of the top players in the world. 2017 Rookie of the Year, 2021 Olympic gold medal winner. Uh, today, we pull up on him at the range to ask him some hard-hitting questions while we watch him stripe the ball. Things like, why don't you let us in? Who is the real Xander? You know, what's getting in the way of you being the best in the world? What does he think about the direction of the tour? How does he want to change the game? And why didn't he respond to my tweets and DMs about me helping him get that player impact money? Uh, I was really confident we were going to work together, so I'm looking forward to a very awkward exchange about that. Uh, so sit back and enjoy. This is Range Talk. My boy Zen. What's going on, man? What's up, baby? Hey, how you doing? Good. Good to see you. Good to see you. You know what I mean? Good to chop it up with you, man here on this beautiful driving range. So tell me though, like when you own the driving range, what kind of stuff, like if you're having a proactive session, what kind of stuff you working on? Yeah, if I'm, if I'm hanging out on the range, um, typically, I mean, I, I honestly don't even play that, or I honestly don't even hit that much anymore. When I was a kid, I would sit on the, I would sleep on the range. You know, uh -huh. I, that's when I developed my sort of golf swing. Right. And I think as I got older, I, I kept chasing golf swing and I learned that it's not about the driving range, it's about playing and figuring out what kind of player I am, what I do well, what I don't do well, you know, flighting it, hitting yeah. it in the wind and stuff like that, which you can kind of practice on the range, but it matters the most on the course. So nowadays when I come to the range, it's it's pretty much I'll just, I'll work on kind of setup stuff. So whether I'm here for 15, 20, 15 minutes or 20 minutes, I'll just work on setup with certain clubs. And I kind of have a baseline that I like to get back to if I haven't been golfing much, or if I am golfing a lot, I just kind of get into a, a good body position distance from the ball and those are kind of the small things that I work on nowadays versus you know panicking when I was a kid if you know, oh man I'm, I'm hooking it like right. why am I hooking it and I sit here for five hours so you stopped going to the range because it was giving you anxiety when you was missing the ball pretty much so, yeah uh, that may okay that make a little bit more sense so <laughs> but you're doing the same thing pre-round two is just 15 minutes you out there on the range and just yeah just I mean I turn uh, yeah. standing still <laughs> over the ball that's your thing yeah you know I, I'm not just standing still okay but, I mean, I, you know I'm, like for tournaments, for example, you know, I'll have a track man out or a foresight and my caddy will be with me or my, my swing coach, my dad, and we'll just, uh, he'll make sure the club is in a couple good positions. And then from there, we just work on hit, hitting a few numbers. It'd, it'd be like, you know, if you're, if you're shooting around, you kind of get your distance from three point line. Right. Whether it's, you know, your toes just on the line or whether you're further back, you can kind of tell, uh, you get your range, you know what right. I mean? And so for me, Literally, we're on the driving range, and that's what I try and do. Uh, for tournaments, I just try and hit a certain number, and I get a feel before I go out and play. Okay, all right. Let me see you just hit a couple wedges, yeah. man. Now that I know I'm holding you against your wheel. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, since you do all your workout on the course, what type of work are you doing on the swing uh, at this point? Are there any things that you're working on, like out on the course with the game? When I try and go on the course, it's it's a get the ball in the hole mentality. I don't care what it looks like. Right. When I'm on the range, I focus a little bit more on, you know, positioning or, you know, I'll do some drills. Like uh, for me, I have really quick hips. Yeah. And so I'm a small guy. I, I, relatively. Relatively, okay. you know, I'm not supposed to hit it really far, but I, you know, I hit it further than most guys on tour, and right. it's all for my lower body. I, I get a lot of lower body drive and sort of, you did long drive, you know, you can see your lower body going and this upper body staying behind and sort of like a slingshot effect. So right. that's not great with everything like yeah. we talked about, you know, it's long drive swing isn't for everyone and it definitely leaks into your game. So a drill that my dad would have me do when I was a kid would just be a, a pause drill. So I would, I would pretty much sit up here get to the top and everything's pretty much stopped and he would either count you know out loud one two and then i would i'll come down and pull the trigger and that pretty much gets my lower body my upper body in sequence so you know i'm not sitting here like doing right. something like this right right so i mean you know i i guess you got a, a pretty good routine i'm not here to preach to you about how you need to spend <laughs> more time on the range but you know looking back over your you know your career especially on the pga tour 2017 rookie of the year you got your Olympic gold medal, which you like top five in the world right now, something like that. 
you, something like you that. pay attention to stuff like that? No. People around me, you know. I, I pay attention to it. Okay. I'm going to tell you, you're top, you top five in the world right okay. now. So when we look at the next five years for you, if you work in that type, if you think right. in that type of way, right. what's some of the stuff that's on your radar, on your agenda to get done? Yeah, I mean, I think the, the next step would be, you know, uh, I, I've been contending in majors. It's something that's really important. You have to learn how to learn how to win. And that's something that's really hard in this game. Golf is full of, we're a bunch of losers. You know, there's only one, <laughs> it sounds weird, but there's only one guy that wins. Yeah, I feel you. Every feel week, you. there's only one guy that gets crowned and everyone else is technically a loser. You know, we get paid nicely to come in second place, but it's not first. And right. so I'm a really competitive guy and I hate losing. So, and I've been doing a lot of it recently. I haven't won a whole lot. The gold medal was a really nice, uh, exactly. nice thing. Exactly. And, you know, I can pat myself on the back, but I think major championships would be the next step for me in my career. And kind of solidifying my legacy as I get older. Right. Let me see some of these, though. Let me see some mid-irons. Okay. I know this is pulling teeth, dog, but you're doing it for a good cause. The people just want to see you strike the ball. <laughs> this is very impressive to see in person, too, by the way. Yeah, see, I don't really got that one. I don't get it like I that. I watched you hit. You got it. No, Your ball just no. goes. You're right. You don't got one. You don't have a 7-iron that bro, goes 180. All, Yours goes 210. Don't, don't compliment me on TV because <laughs> I don't need people out there trying to take my money, okay? <laughs> all right. But no, so, you know, you, you want to win some more majors, uh, you know, and you, you're tired of just finishing in and around the top. So what's kind of the game plan from you from a data perspective? Like what types of numbers and things are you trying to tweak from a performance perspective right. to get that done? I mean, I, I a lot of it's just, uh, you know, I. Real, I mean, if I, I, I know the answer, I, I need to chip a little bit better. Yeah. And so once again, we're, we're getting away from the range. You know what I mean? Because, you know, I talk like I don't hit any balls. I hit a lot of balls. Like if, if so you just lied to me on TV. No, no. All right, man. I hit a lot man. of balls when I was a kid, like growing <laughs> up. Like even as like, I'm 20, almost 28, pr probably up until the age of 23, I was hammering golf balls. Do you, know, you think that that's day. still that like that pays dividends like, now? I, I think so. Okay. Yeah. All you know, right. the messages in the dirt. There's all these old sayings yeah, you know, yeah. that people try and tell you. But yeah, I, I really I when I was frustrated, I would take my anger out and everything on the range. I didn't talk to anybody. I would just sit here and hit balls and hit balls until I was so tired. I was like, all right, I'm, I'm done. Right. But now it's about, you know, the finesse and the finer things. I need to get better at chipping and uh, learning how to score and getting comfortable in those big moments. So for me to, to get over this hump, it's more it's more mental, you know. Right. I've been trying to work on my my mind a little bit more than than golf, if that makes sense. Right. And then, like, uh, you got? Are you a big data person? Do you look at a lot of that? Uh, the, the numbers. And I think things so. Like that? I mean, you know, there, there's there's always uh, paralysis by analysis. You start looking at numbers and you start critiquing yourself, and you know, everyone that's competitive or likes to do something, you you get stuck and you right. freeze because you're like, dang, I'm not that good at that, or right. whoa, I'm really good at this, and then right. you get in your own head. So, I try to look at it just completely unbiased, not thinking anything. And um, my, I always look at it with my team, so I'm not the only one looking at it. And then we all go over it and, you know, we kind of talk about it and, and move from there. Hey, yo, so, I mean, do me a quick favor since I got you here. And yeah. If you don't like uh, hitting balls, why don't you just watch me for a second? <laughs> So what's something that, you know, I'm a pretty decent amateur, you know what I mean? But I've been getting taken advantage of a lot on the golf course okay. too lately. Uh, so when you look at somebody like me and you watch this swing, what's some, what's some quick advice you could give me? Okay. Put me on the spot. So I can already tell you have, you have crazy lag and you have crazy lower body drive. And you did long drive. You know, you know what that's all about. You right. know how to create, use the ground and this jumping action. Unfortunately, golf just isn't that. It's all about control and not letting loose and being able to sort of control your golf ball. You know, we have like a 10 mile an hour breeze here and you know, if I'm sitting there telling you to flight it, it's gonna be really hard for you to swing soft. Right. You know, I'm sure people are like, hey, Roger, you need to swing slower. Yeah, it's like, people say that to me. Yeah, well, how they am I sound supposed like, to do that? You know what I mean? They sound like haters too. Yeah, you know exactly, I mean? yeah. yeah. And I would just be like, screw it, watch this. I can my seven iron 220. You exactly. Know? That's what I would do. But to me, it's just, it would be like a, a, a a neurological transformation for you to sort of feel like your lower body isn't going because your natural move just from long drive is you wind up and then your lower body will sit down and you'll jump and this club is sitting back here and it's so hard if, if you're to do that slowly it's really hard to do versus like imagine if you kind of get up to the top and then this slowly goes but this is coming with it and it's kind of more together that would help you control those windows so it's basically I'm telling you you're screwed man <laughs> So you telling me I have to slow down to be better, um, but then you want me to forfeit not even, my not even slow down. Okay. Just your your sequencing is so 
push to the max for distance, yeah. it's going to be hard for you to slow down. You know, it'd be like telling a guy who's throwing at 100 miles an hour to slow down. How, would he be like, oh, do I just slow this down? Yeah, That's yeah, how yeah. you'd feel, you know what I mean? Versus he's just used to freaking loading and slinging this thing. And it's the same way you hit it. So you're telling me I have no hope. I'd rather just watch you hit golf. We can get back That's to cool. that. That's, That's all good. That's cool. <laughs> so look, so, you know, a lot of people that will watch you, myself included, would say, on the golf course, you were very chill, quiet, low key, mellow type of person. Now, is that who you are, or is that who you want the world to think that you are? Um, I don't. It's funny. I I don't really care what the world thinks of me. You know, one of those type of guys. One of those types of guys. Right. And when I say it, I, I really, you know, I try to be the same person, on and off. I mean, and when I say that, I mean I try to be as, as little two faced as I can. Mm -hmm. Golf is a weird thing. It's a gentleman's game. We're supposed to be polite. We get in trouble for swearing. How you feel about that? You know, maybe the people, my sponsors mm -hmm. wouldn't want me. Uh, we're here with Calvin today. I don't yeah. think they would want us to want to see me swearing, as, you know, wearing the logo, if I had to guess. But I think the people would like to, you know, get a little bit more personality. You know, we talked about a little bit earlier today, like you want to see who we are and we all are kind of cut from the same cloth, it seems, right. because we all act the same way on the course. Right. So. I'll, I'll have you know, I make it a point to curse in most of my content. And, you know, I'm here <laughs> interviewing you right now, so I'm going to just go ahead and have to push back against your theory. <laughs> but if we're looking at some of the ways that you do want the PGA Tour to change, like over the next five years, like what, what types of ways do you think that y'all could be more progressive as players or like the tour could be more progressive, progressive as an organization? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a tricky thing. It's set up to a way where... Um, I mean, just based on facts, I mean, we have we have little representation on tour. You know, it, mm -hmm. it's all it's a PJ tour. And, you know, the, the voice on tour is we have a pack, a, a player council and a player advisory council, you know, and they, they get a word in. But there's only four guys kind of representing all of us. So right. at no point, you know, if, if I'm not in the mood to sort of make a point one day, like my my thoughts or voice won't be heard ever. You right. know what I mean? And right. I always tell people I'm, I'm trying to be good at one thing and one thing only, and, and that's right here, play right. golf. I'm not trying to, you know, be the voice for all the people. Like I'm selfish when it comes to this. It's hard to get good at one thing, and I'm still trying to get good at it. So, um, it, it's it's a really it's a tricky thing. So I mean, you don't you don't really like. Let's say if we could say the culture of the PGA Tour was going to resemble some other sport, some other professional sport. Which one would you like the tour to represent, or like which one would you like? Uh, which which other professional sport would you like to see more of on tour? Well, I mean, it, it's just interesting. It's golf is just so different. You yeah. know, I, I think like if you look at all the all the really popular sports, I mean, you can just rattle them off. You know what I mean? Uh, f NFL, football. Uh, you have football overseas. Right. Um, you know, there's there's always it's just different because you're when when guys are jawing at each other in the league, you can't hear it with microphones. Right. You know, like if you and I stop talking right now that's pretty much how a golf tournament would sound. Right. Like you can hear everything. Right. So for that reason alone, it's it's hard to, and it's so individual too that, you know, if, if I say something, you know, I would never say anything to you in the league because you would whoop my ass, you know what I mean? I mean, But if I had a teammate theory. that was twice the size of you, maybe I'd get up in your grill, <laughs> you know? But you got your caddy though. <laughs> Have you seen him? He's shorter than I am. I mean, he still look like he'll step up and, you know, jump in if you, you know, I, he, you got I mean, into a bit I, of a little I, altercation. I, I expect him to. You expect you know? him to. You pay him to do that, He's actually. my guy. I mean, I don't say it, pay him to. You know? okay, Hopefully right. we're good enough friends where <laughs> money aside, he'll, he'll have my back, but. Um, I like to think I have his as well, so. So like um, with all that drawing that's happening, like from the fans and things like that, that mm -hmm. people starting to crack down on, like your sentiments are that it's just golf not the place for that. That's what See, you feel? I don't, I don't, uh, if, if the fans are, are John and saying stuff to me, it's almost like white noise. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I like, why would you feed the hyenas? You know what I mean? I see right. certain players getting out there and they start getting into it with certain fans. I mean, if someone starts coming at me from a personal note and talking about my family and things like that, that'd be a different story. And, and hopefully no one would ever want to do that. Cause right. what, what did I do to you to right. deserve that? You know what I mean? Right. But, and um, I got your back now too. So if I yeah. just fall, that, fall guys? away, dog. Yeah. <laughs> you gonna meet Roger on the first team if something <laughs> bad happens. <laughs> yeah, so like, you know, I guess you focused on doing one thing and you trying to get good at this game, mm -hmm. uh, which is probably why you didn't respond to my tweet or my Instagram message when I tried to jump on your team for this player impact money. <laughs> so the funny thing is, I I have a Twitter, I have an Instagram, I don't have the passwords. I have little input to what's being put on. I have two, two, two weeks before the Masters this year, yeah. I, just, I just decided to unplug. Yeah. I was like, I need to, 
to, to block out the haters. I need to focus on golf, this one thing. I'm not going to be as good as you as interviewing people and yeah. doing, providing social media content. So please don't take it personally. I don't want to see you on the first tee, but don't, don't take it personally here. I didn't even see it. I think I'm, that's that's what I would have said too if I was you. Uh, you know what I mean? I would. I'm over here looking yeah. at it. Go, Roger Steele. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Somebody tell him I don't have my password. <laughs> no. So you know, with all of that, you know, player impact stuff and, right. and the things that they're trying to do to to get more visibility for the players. Do you think that's a good thing, or do you think that the players? I feel like they just need to focus on, you know, getting the ball in the hole faster and nobody really care about you, it. You know, I, I understand their angle um, of creating this program. Um, I'm competitive. Yeah. My whole thing was just, you know, put it in the pot and let the wolves go to war. Like, let the lions get their food, you know what right, I mean? Like, it doesn't right, matter. Right. Like, I, if you're trying to incentivize the top player to do something, uh, sometimes the top players aren't the most popular players. Exactly. And in and, and, and every sport, there's always a, a top player that no one likes, but he's respected amongst right. his peers, and, and he gets you know paid accordingly. So to me, I don't like the program. I've, I've come out and said it before. Um, I think they should just put it in the pot, and we can all play for it. And if you're better than someone that week, you'll take your chunk. The problem I have with that is, like, you know, you're really shooting down my chances of getting a little piece of that money. <laughs> but, you know, that's neither here nor there. Right, you know, that's just my I'm, opinion, you know. That's still, that's still your opinion. Right, I, I understand. And, you know, my offer still stands, so, you know, if you ever change your mind, if anybody on your team want to, you know, I'm here for you. Okay. Whatever. Oh, maybe, maybe I'll get that password, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so, you know, now that, that, that we in the space, like, my whole thing with the social media game is I'm just trying to get people to adopt the game you know okay. what I mean I want people that never thought of golf as something they could you know invest their time and energy in and okay. fall in love with I want them I want those people to come and find the game really trying to like make golf cool okay uh and so like when I think about you know the people that complain to me they all like oh man golf too hard like it's gonna take me all this time to you know what <laughs> I mean da, 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 da. like no grown person want to go back and be a novice all over again right right so Tell me in your words, if you was talking to 28, 29 year old Xander uh -huh. and he was just picking up the game and he had aspirations on becoming a scratch golfer, what does that process look like? Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I admire your courage. You are, you are, you're going against the grain, my man. You are trying to convince people that golf, you know, that it is doable. You, you can golf and learn it at, at an older age. I mean, for me, I think the biggest thing would be to to find a, a, a buddy or someone to do it with. Right. You know, that's like number one, as weird as that may sound or as simple as that may sound, like it's, it's always good to have a friend in the misery because if you're by yourself and you're doing this day after day and you're not getting any better. Right. Damn, that is so, that is not fun. So you I, need, I would never want to do so that. So you need a partner in crime, first and foremost. You need a partner in crime and, you know, whether you guys have some drinks and, you know, talk and hit balls and converse about what's going on in your lives that'd be a good way to like an intro a soft opening to it right um but there's so many ways to go around sort of getting yourself into it and, and you can sort of find that with your friends i guess so i mean so you just a fan of just showing up to the golf space with the homies and just whatever happens happens don't even put those expectations on yourself right to get good at right. the game and then you can pick on each other and then maybe that'll motivate you to get better yeah and then amongst your friends if you guys all all are like a 20 handicap or the same level you can get better together and then you can start taking trips together to you know nicer properties. It doesn't matter where you start, but where you, wherever you get to, you know, there's nice places everywhere. But pretty much, except that you're gonna be trash for like ever, pretty much. It's a, it's, a, it's a, yeah, basically. Like it, it's hard to be good. I mean, my boy, my boy Xander keeping it real with y'all right now. <laughs> that's that's you that's said a, you're not very good, but you're a two handicap, and that is in the upper percentile for golfers. So you're you're knocking yourself down. And I'm still trash. And so yeah, they I mean, never, that, they that, probably that, not gonna that, get to. That, that's all perspective. I could also call myself trash. You know, I'm not number one in the world, so. That's how you look at it. This boy over here dropping knowledge, dog. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about you, like, off the course. What kind of stuff you into, man? Because you're so quiet. You're so quiet walking around, and you know what I mean? We don't really get to get yeah. let in. What kind of stuff you into? You know, I, I love my dogs. Dogs. I, I didn't grow up with dogs, and they're... That's what you spend your money on. I love... Well, tech, they don't even know it, but I am... I'm like the absent father, but I do pay for all their stuff to stay alive at the vet hospital, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> you know, they, they don't know that, but if I could speak to them, you know, I'd let them know that they're only here because of me. But uh, no, I, I love my dogs. I love hanging out with my wife. Um, I, I do so much time on the road by myself. You know, I, I talk about Austin, my caddy. He's like my road wife. You know, I, uh, there's a point where I saw him. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> <laughs> 
Don't look at me like it's not. It doesn't. Not like that. But <laughs> I spent more. Wife. I, Where spent, you at? I spent more time with my caddy than right. my own wife, right, or right, my right. girlfriend at the time. So when I'm home, I like to see my friends catch up. Whether it's shoot, just hanging out, having a drink at you know my place. I like to keep it low key. I don't yeah. like to go to the really like public areas. You seem like a very go to the beach or something with my dogs or my right. wife. You know, low key, just chill. Enjoy, okay. enjoy San Diego. What kind of music you into? Though? I'm a big music person. Okay, um, shoot, I listen to. I know people always say listen to all kinds of music. I, I feel like I'm really depending on what I'm doing. Yeah. I'll listen to different kinds of music. So okay. if I'm, if I'm trying to, get, you know, like I mean, off season wise for me, if I'm trying to lift heavy or do something, you know, more explosive, I'll listen to some sort of like hip hop rap. Yeah. Favorite artist. Obviously, you could tell I'm Shoot, a pretty I mean, big hip hop person. Yeah, dude, growing up, it's, it's funny. I listened to a lot of 50 Cent growing up. My, Man, that's aggressive, dog. My caddy and I, we still we still listen to 50 Cent on the road. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Two, you know, Hispanic looking kids sitting in a car <laughs> that aren't Hispanic at all listening to hip hop is a pretty funny look. So, uh, but then you know, my my putting coach, he's 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 big into. He kind of introduced me to Tribe and um, some old old school hip hop like yeah. 90s hop, which I which I really enjoy. It's a little more mellow, a little uh -huh. more chill, and then. Sometimes when we're putting, we have Motown going. So Ooh. it kind of favorite Motown artist, um, or group or whatever. Gosh, I love the. Uh, I mean, whole, it's always his Earth, Wind, and Fire playlist. But uh -huh. I, I like. Uh, uh, oh my gosh, I'm drawing a blank right now. I have the whole playlist too. Or a song, whatever it is. Um, I always call it uh, Light the Fire. I always thought the guy was saying Light the Fire, but it's not called Light the Fire. It's uh, just sing it real quick. I'll pick it up. Uh, it's Hearts of Fire. You gonna sing it for me? You want me to sing it for you? I mean, just a little, just, just like. It's like Hearts of Fire, yeah, <laughs> Desire. No, hearts of Fire. Thank you. Yeah, there you go. Okay, I got you. you I got know? you. I know all the songs, yeah. dog. I know all of them. Let me see you beat on these a few. Pulling you all the way out your comfort zone. I know uh, you don't hit no drivers on the range. I don't huh? even know if we could hit drivers with these people down here, honestly. Oh, you beating it like that? <laughs> well, this isn't that far, you know. It's I mean, not, we, it's we, a long drive range, but it's only like two. Well, it's only 290 to get to those guys. Only 290. My boy beats the ball, y'all. He beats the ball. <laughs> 212 ball speed. He's telling me I beat the ball. That was a long time ago. You could hit it into the parking lot from all right All right, all right. So no drivers, let's no drivers. Like, I give let's you, go three wood. I'll give you a three wood. Let's Grab the three, three wood. wood. Let's do that. Now it's going to bother me who sings that. Hearts of fire. I'll let you know. I'll shoot you a text. I'm trying to think. So look, so, you know, not only do I try to speak to the adults and get them into the game, I also try to get more kids into the game. Yeah. And, you know, with the kids, you know, they're all so competitive and they all want to know, like, man, how could I get really good at this? You know, so especially the kids back in the Chicago, they, right. you know, we don't really get a chance to see people like you that, that have kind of climbed the ranks through the game. So if you're giving messages to kids coming up and, and, and that love the sport and really want to figure out ways to take it to the next level, what types of stuff should they be doing with their time to to get them going the right directions? Man, it's, uh, for me, I, I was lucky. I, I grew up with, with a, a buddy of mine and it's sort of, I use that example for to answer one of your earlier questions. And it, when you're a kid, like growing up in social settings, whether it's really bad or, or, or really good or you're really fortunate, there's always, you always have a friend, you know, whether it's one or two, like, I don't have that many friends. I'm not someone to say I have a lot of friends, you know, yeah. I have the same friends from kindergarten, you know right. what I mean? And so, Wherever you're growing up, you, you always kind of hang on to that person, whether it's a sibling or someone that you know from your neighborhood or someone that you go to school with, you right. know what I mean? And like for me, I was lucky. I grew up with, when I was nine years old, I grew up with a kid um, and we're, we're still good friends now. We both play professionally now. And I just remember we would always just take turns. He was better than me when we were growing up and it would, it would, man, it would bug the shit out of me that he was better <laughs> than me, you know what I mean? He was smaller than I was and he'd kick my ass all the time. Right. And it, We'd always make a contest, like who could show up earlier on the weekend, like who can get a ride from mom or dad to drop him off at the course, because right. we go to the same place, like who's gonna show up earlier? And you know, I'd be sitting there hitting balls and he'd be rolling up and I'm like, like that's right, I'm outworking you right now, you right, know what I mean? Right, so right. there's that internal competition that you can have and so like having a friend in that whole process is is so key to keeping a kid motivated because right. if you're, all, if, you know, if, if I was 10 years old and I was out there, you know, my dad drops me off at, at some golf course and I'm sitting there like, hitting balls for an hour and then all of a sudden I'm bored. Like, you know what I mean? Like, what am I supposed to do? You know exactly. what I mean? Like, it, it's, it's exactly. good to have a friend or whether it's a, a, a like anybody to, to push you and even just to hang out with when golf kind of gets boring or, you know, cause there's times when I was like, you know, 12 or 13 and I was going to the course and I didn't really want to, but 
I was like, if I want to be good at this, I know I have to do this. And all my friends are, you know, or all the kids I knew from school were, you know, going to the to park to play, you know, tackle football or whatever. Exactly. You know, exactly. and I was like, I wanted to do that. But exactly. I was like, dang, I got to get better at this. So. Did you feel like you had to get better at it or was it just something that spoke to you? Like you were like kind of intrinsically motivated to get better at golf? You know, it's, I don't know. I was never pushed to play golf. Right. I, I played soccer growing up. My, my dad's not American, so I didn't grow up playing. You know, I had to teach myself how to throw football and uh, shoot a <laughs> basketball and all those things. You know what I mean? So uh, that was a weird part for me growing up, like watching other people and their technique and everything. But um, I just hated team sports. I was like, I, I hated losing. I'd play soccer games. And I felt like I, I played a good game and we'd lose. And, you know, everyone would be like, oh, it's okay. And, you know, 10 year old me was like, F that. Like, exactly. I'm pissed. Like, exactly. I don't like losing. So, you know, I watched my dad play golf and he, he showed me that it's, it's an individual thing. You know, whether you're really good, you get all the credit. And if you suck, you have to own that and you wear take it on all the, the blame. So, golf is a really interesting thing. I think it's a great thing to get kids in. And whether they like it or not later in their life, it teaches you so many good lessons. Uh, off the course that you right. can kind of hold good value to. So the major thing here is just making sure that that we have communities for kids to develop alongside each other. Right. And to, you know, keep the fire when like if somebody riding low, they riding high and it's yeah, just, you know, you, keep you, everything you balanced you balance out. balance it out for sure. Right. So, you know, I know that there's a special project that you're working on or that you, you know, got underway up at Go Hill Park, man. Tell me about that. Yeah, that's uh, something I'm, I'm, I'm happy to do. You know, it, it's weird to to sort of be in a position to give back, you know, that's not right. that's not something I, I thought of when I was like, man, I want to be a, a professional tour player and win tournaments and, you know, hold this trophy, hold that thing, uh, to sit here and be like, you know, I didn't think about giving back. And as I got older, you know, you, you kind of realize that I'm in a fortunate position and it, it's just, it feels really nice to give back to kids. And so right. uh, Gold Hill is, is NCJJ, John Ashworth and the Emmerichs run that uh, whole scene up there and a lot of other really great people. and. I just, you know, donated some money to build a clubhouse out there for kids to hang out. Right. You know, like if they're hitting balls and they want to go and, and chill and watch some TV on the couch or something like I don't, I don't know exactly what the ideas are for that clubhouse, but I just want it to be a, a safe haven to chill. Right. And just a safe place for kids to go and, and hang out when, when, you know, after school or at any point over the weekend. Right. Because I agree, man. That's like one of the, the, the biggest components for me personally growing up in Chicago is that I didn't really have a community or like a core group of peers right. that I could lean into. And they probably didn't even, none of them played golf for sure. You yeah, know no, I mean? if, if I wanted to go hoop, I could do that all day. Exactly. You know? But if I wanted to go exactly. to the golf, golf the course, tricky one. I was going to be with a bunch of 50-year-old dudes drinking and smoking and, right. you know what I mean, <laughs> telling me to hurry up. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but no, man, let me see you hit one more before we, uh, before we get out of here. So give me some, give me some, before you hit this shot, man, give me some, some, you know, takeaways for like golf as a whole, for like people that are coming into the game. Uh, you know, obviously the game is growing. Otherwise right. people like me wouldn't even be here interviewing <laughs> you, right? It's like, this is indicative of the game growing. Fair, fair, so fair. what's the message that you want to put out there to all of the people that's coming into the sport? You know what I mean? Is there anything that, that you know, when you think about uh, how we gonna protect the trajectory of the sport, are there things that you wanna say to people out there? You know, I think it's almost, you're, you're a prime example. Yeah. You know, like just us talking here and, and you're, you're a black guy from Chicago. Yeah. And you're trying to get guys into, into playing golf. Right. And to me, that just shows growth. Golf is such a, it's a, it's a rich person sport. And I think if you can break it down and, and do enough right things and create little communities or little clubhouses where kids have an opportunity to play, they might fall in love with it. And if they don't, that's totally fine, but the opportunity needs to be created. And I think um, with all the golfers coming in, you have to be patient and it's yeah. not for everyone and you don't have to love it. Right. But I think if you can kind of come in with an open mind and if parents are putting more kids into it, like if I was telling a parent like, hey, if you have the opportunity, let your kid play all sports. Right. You know what I mean? But, you know, throw golf in there as, as, as something that can be more zen for them as a kid, calming, right. you know, versus, you know, playing tackle football as a child trying to kill somebody, you know right. what I mean? Right. It, it's just a different aspect to a, a kid's upbringing. And I think maybe, you know, maybe your kid will find that he loves golf and he doesn't love football or doesn't like, you know, basketball or tennis or anything like that. So right. I feel like if you just come in with an open mind and understand that it is, it is very difficult. Um, and if you can kind of bring your friend along the way and, and you, you have a place and, you know, people like us can kind of create a community for, you know, underprivileged or privileged kids to just hang out at, I think that really would make a difference. So keep an open mind, 
come into it being patient. Yeah. Bring a friend. Yeah. Have fun. Have fun. So, and then, you know, before I let you go, uh, I do want you to keep an open mind as well uh, about that, that player impact money that I think that me and you can get if we just, if we just, I'm telling you, dog, I think it's some magic here. I don't know if you feeling this little, this little tension that we got between us. I think that this is, this chemistry, dog, something Heart like. Heart to fire, heart to fire. Come on, dog, you see me? You be out here singing, yeah, that we was, hits. Yeah, I know. If we start singing, we may lose fans, my man. Nah, uh, subjective. Man, I appreciate your time, dog. I'll do, I'll keep doing that and you keep singing, my man. I can't thanks, sing either. Thanks for the time. You sound, <laughs> a lot, you sound a lot better than I do, I swear. <laughs> so there you have it. At a certain point, it turns out, you don't really need to practice all that much. Could be fact, but also could be cap. Uh, maybe he's lying to throw everybody off so we could keep killing people on tour. Let's see how it pans out. Uh, we also got some deeper insights on who he was as a person. He's a philanthropist. He's an R&B fanatic. Not the best singer, though, but still way more swag than meets the eye. And we also learned that he allegedly never got my message, but now that I told him, maybe I could get on the team and we could get this player impact money after all. You know what I mean? I might be leveling up on y'all soon, so y'all just stay posted. Uh, but I hope y'all enjoyed it, and we'll see y'all next time on Range Talk. Yeah.